So, uh, quick, quick video um, because I had a question uh, from a new client who's asking about uh, cortisone injections in relation to back pain. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a, there's a woman outside. She laughs like uh, sounds like Nursey from Blackadder. Anyway, hopefully it doesn't get picked up. Um, anyway, yeah. So, so cortisone injections in relation to back pain. So, you, know, you can have cortisone injections for. Generally, they're used around joints. Um, so, you know, thing, you know, if you've got like arthritis problems, for example, um, they're a good tool to use. Um, so, what is cortisone? Basically, it's a steroid that has an anti-inflammatory effect that helps relieve pain and obviously takes out inflammation around joints to help restore some movement. So, in terms of back pain, and again, this isn't advice to say yes to have one or no to not have one. That's going to be, you know, if you're c contemplating it, that's a discussion between you and your medical professional, so, you know, your GP or doctor uh, or specialist, whoever it may be. But we, in terms of back pain, there's, 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 you know, because it's a tool, like any other tool, there are certain trade-offs. As long as we understand the trade-offs, we know we, how we can better implement the tool and also avoid any of the potential risks associated with it. So, Cortisone injections and back pain. So usually, um, I believe, and of course, you know, medical professionals can correct me here, that usually once you have the injection, it, the, the effects of it last roughly about three months, um, from what I know. I, I mean, again, I'm not an expert on this. I haven't had one done. This is from you know other people telling me this. Um, lasts about three months, and then it sort of it kind of wears off. Um, we also limited because those potential risk factors because of the damage it can do to things such as you know, ligament and connective tissue in terms of weakening them, you are limited as to how many you could have per year because of that. So there are you know, uh, contraindications to having cortisone injections on their own. But in terms of back pain, what do we do? So we've got back pain, we're in pain, we can't move, it's horrible, you know, everything's inflamed and angry. Have the cortisone injection, calms down, wonderful. Now you can move and you can do stuff but you haven't actually fixed the problem. So the underlying problem is that you've got faulty movement habits and postures that are acting as what we call pain triggers or aggravators that are creating either you know, unnecessary wear and tear on potentially like a disc, for example, or it's just sensitizing certain muscles to being in pain, or you've got like a loss of proprioception around the joints in your spine and, and moments when you move and you get that split second where things let go because the proprioception is faulty. It gives you that catch of pain. So when we have a, a cortisone injection, we, we dull all that feedback, which is good in terms of if you've got no pain, now you can move and do stuff and you know get to work, be with the kids, do whatever you need to do. But we've also now removed um, you know, our most important feedback mechanism because you know, what is pain in the day? Pain is feedback that your body is telling you that you're doing something it doesn't like, that's either you know, creating further damage or is you know, ingraining some sort of faulty movement pattern. So what can happen is people will have the cortisone injection, which is great, um, but then what they'll do is they'll actually, because they haven't got that pain mechanism, they'll actually do more of the movements and postures that are creating the underlying problem without having the feedback to stop them from doing it. So what happens in that three months is you can actually create more damage, so for example, more damage to a disc bulge or a herniation without realizing it. Um, and then as that cortisone wears off, you might be in a, you know, a, a slightly worse position than when you were the first time um, before you had the cortisone injection because you've had that kind of extra three months of, you know, um, she's off again, um, of not having that feedback to kind of stop you from doing stuff. Because when your back's sore, you, you're naturally very careful with it and you, you, know, you kind of let it rest and you, you're, you're thoughtful and methodical. Again, once you take that pain feedback away and you start doing stuff, again, you know, there's that risk that you'll create more damage long term. So again, I'm not telling you to have it or not have it. That, again, that's a decision between you and your GP or a discussion you should be having with you and your, and your GP or medical professional. Um, but we need to understand the, the, the advantage and disadvantages at all. So advantages, yes, it takes away the pains you can move and do things, so it's a good short-term fix. Disadvantage is that you've now lost your feedback me mechanism that was probably preventing you from doing further damage. So, for example, say if you were going to have one, I would say, yeah, you can have one because it gets you moving, but I would be 100% all over. Um, work, you know, getting rid of those pain aggravators and you know, nailing good posture and movement 
and getting, you know, using that time wisely to build some stability and strength for things like, you know, McGill's Big Three, glute control, hip control, that sort of stuff. So that when that cortisol injection runs out, you don't just completely implode in a world of pain. You've actually used that time wisely to fix the underlying problem so you're in a better position when it runs out. You shouldn't have a, you know, a flare up again at the tail end of that, you know, as that cortisone runs out. So again, I'm not telling you to have it or to not have it, but just understand if you do have it and you haven't got that, that feedback mechanism, there is a risk of you doing more damage. But again, regardless of whether you have a cortisone injection or not, you still have to do the work to understand, identify and remove the pain triggers and aggravators, the movements of postures that are creating that underlying injury and pain. You have to have to do that whether you have a cortisone injection or not. So that's the most important thing is doing that is probably your first step. And you might find you might not need a cortisone injection if you do a good enough job with that. Um, but then again, there are certain times where you know, a cortisone injection is the right thing to do. But again, that's down to your GP or medical professional and a discussion that you'll have with them and the decision you'll, you'll make along with them. Um, but yeah, just be aware of that. If you have it, you know, there's a danger you might do more long-term damage to the underlying issue. So you've got to kind of weigh up the benefits. Um, but yeah, so if you do have it, now you know, removing pain aggravators and triggers, get on top of those exercises, build stability, build proprioception around the spine so when it runs out, you're in a better position than when you were before.